All right, folks, so this is a uh, little video here. This has been a nightmare with these exhaust valves for my 305 heads that I'm trying to build. So this is my 305 head. I'm putting 305 heads on that Vortec that's in my truck. It's a 98 Vortec short block. These are 87 305 TBI heads. And, uh, you know, the reason I'm doing this, this is the heads that I already had to begin with. And I don't have a lot of money to be putting in, uh, you know, cylinder heads and, you know, getting remain heads and going to the machine shop and blah, 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 blah. So, uh, to get the short end of the stick here, uh, on these, he on these, uh, valves here, uh, let me explain something. So, all these original valves are flat-faced. There's another one. These are the original exhaust valves. There, there, and there. All right, let's get that a little brighter. I cleaned them up a little bit. I didn't really clean these two up yet. But uh, I want to show you this, and I do have this one too. It's just sitting in my vehicle right now. But uh, so anyway, so I swapped these intake valves out. These are the original intake valves, and I do have all them. So this is the original intake valve. And if we look, it's got this little dish on here, okay? It's not even that much. I mean, really, if you like, a penny is kind of thick, but a penny won't sit all the way down in there, if that makes sense there. But it's a little dish there, so, you know, it's a little thick there. Look how thick that is. That's not going to sit all the way down in there. A dime probably would, but I don't think I got a dime there somewhere. But the point is of this is, let's see, here's a dime. Here's a dime. This is a little bit thinner, not much, but a little bit. Yeah, it still sits up a little bit. So it's not too much of a dish of a uh dish there. And uh, you know, just trying to prove it here. But I mean it's just been a nightmare. See there we go. I can kind of get an idea of it. It doesn't sit all the way down in there, it sits above it. So it's not that deep of a dish. And, uh, so what I was trying to do, I'm not really doing it for compression or anything like that. I'm actually wanted to replace these intake valves originally because I took a file and sometimes when you're disassembling heads, when you take these valves out, you'll get a little burr and it'll actually catch on the guide when you're taking them out. You'll have a little burr like where the keepers are and the valve won't slide past that and you have to end up taking a file and filing it to get them out so that's what i had did to a lot of the valves on it and that's why i'm replacing them i just don't trust that and i don't want to put keepers on there and then uh, basically it just boils down to dropping a valve that's the main reason i'm replacing them and then some of them got a little weathered and you know i just i have all 16 valves you know but the issue is is where i filed some of them i noticed that some of them i kind of filed a little too hard and uh kind of ruined them a little bit had i known what i know now it's kind of like the same concept with the uh wheel studs on the, my etzel there you know pull the whole drum and the hub assembly off together don't mean knocking out the wheel studs and trying to separate the drum from the hub because that's a nightmare and uh because they're pretty much just about impossible they're one of a kind wheel lug studs and uh you know that's just the way it is but the reason I'm doing this is because of that, because some of them are a little weathered and scaly and everything else. This one's fine. This one will clean up. But some of them are kind of a little rough. They've been in the weather and they were in a shed, the roof leak and blah, 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 blah. And plus a file on them and it's just, you know, domino effect. So we're just replacing them all. So I got the idea. I was like, okay. I was like, some of these other valves are, you know, I got to think about it. I was like, I'll just buy a new set of intake and exhaust valves and call it good. So I got Z28 springs, got the retainers, the keepers, everything. And they're supposed to be good for, yeah, I don't know. I've heard mixed reviews. 500 to 550 lift, blah, 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 blah. And uh, got everything to some of the heads except for the intake and exhaust valve. So I bought the intake valve, did some research on it. And I was like, I got to think about it. I was like, okay. Looks like I want to help this thing a little bit with compression and everything. So this is one. This is a 194, but just to give you an example here. This has got a pretty big dish on it, if you really look at it. 
and uh, it's a 194. These valves on this 305 are 184 and 15s, but just to give you an idea here, here's a dime. And this is a good example because the valves that I was going to buy for this 305 head originally, you know, you could take a dime and you could sit down in there and it's almost, if we hold that steel, get it centered and up, it's almost flush. Just to give you an idea. So that's a pretty deep dish there. And, you know, the reason I'm doing this too is I want it valves that obviously flowed better not trying to kill the flow of them but at the same time i'm trying to uh you know help it every way i can i'm not really doing it for compression this was mainly just to help a little bit and uh you know just too many issues with the original valves and trying to just make everything better so i want to take to the next level i like to take things to the next level and i ended up doing research and it took about two weeks and i finally found these and these are 1293s i believe no they are not 1393s these are 1393s they're sealed power and i finally bought all these the intake valves was not an issue found them real good they are 1130 seconds standard size valve stem diameter they are the as far as i know i'll double check them and verify it they are 4.9280 in length and uh you know you go look online and every time you look at pictures online they always look like this or they'll take a picture of the stem because it's got the two grooves they take like a picture of that there you see oh it's got two grooves and they take one far away like that and that's it that's it that's the only pictures they have. They don't actually, you know, have a picture of the face. Like that. And it's been a nightmare. Huge nightmare. But I finally found them. And, uh, you know, I ended up doing research on them. And these are 1393s. They're sealed power intake valves. So I ended up piecing them together. I had to order them from a pile of different places. And I finally got all eight. So I finally have. So that is good. And, uh. Had a heck of a time, but I did finally find them. Thank God. And now it's just these exhaust valves, and they have been a night a nightmare. I tried to find NOS exhaust valves because they have the flat face like that. That is a flat face. Yes, they're a little carbon up, but you know it's got a flat face. There's no dish whatsoever, and that's what I wanted. You know, it actually helps. I mean, a tiny bit with compression. Yeah, I mean. But it's not really why I did it. It's just, like I said, it's just, you know. Too many issues with the original valves being weathered. And I fouled them and blah, 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 blah. And I just didn't need a new set. Either way. And, uh, you know, I don't want to go to the machine shop. I'm just going to put all new hardware in it. You know, valves and springs, keepers, you know, everything. Just replace everything. We're just using the bare head. And, uh. That's the easiest way to explain it. And I've looked all over the place. And I finally, after doing research for, again, about two weeks, I found the Dash 1904 the exhaust valve. It's a 1.5 exhaust valve. And I can't find any information whatsoever on, like, just say, a small block from early to mid-60s, like a 283 or a 327. The actual correct length of the valve i cannot find the original standard length on them and then apparently i guess after doing a little research here that these are 150 thousandths longer or something i don't know but when i check the original valves these are the original valves they measure 4.9280 that's what they measured and these heads have never been apart this is off a original roller 87 tbi motor so it's 87 tbi 305 it's a roller motor and that's what these measures. It's never been apart, ever. So, I know that's nothing's ever been altered or anything. But it's 4.9280. And, uh, had a heck of a time. Because you can find them in that length. But the problem is, is trying to find the correct stem diameter. And they're the standard 1130 seconds. Very popular. Very popular. A lot of, you know, I don't know a lot about Chrysler products. But a lot of Ford stuff uses the 1130 seconds. And, uh, you know, Chevrolet, obviously. And... You know, they in six cylinders and, you know, just 302s for Fords and just very popular, very popular stem diameter size. And uh, 
so you know it's just been a heck of a time and let me show you what i got here i'm gonna quit blabbing and i will show y'all real quick these are the 1393s and uh actually it's just it's 2143 i told y'all wrong yep 2143 is the intake valves Yep, 2143. Let's see, we got another part number, 2302 right here. Huh. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. But, so anyway, so we got all the intake valves finally situated. They are 11 30 seconds. They're the correct length, and, you know, they're 184 valves. Try to find the uh, stem diameter being correct the actual size of the valve being correct the actual length of the valve you know it's just trying to make sure everything was right and like i said the intake valves are taken care of now these are a fucking nightmare and you know i'm not exaggerating that whatsoever it has been a nightmare so a little research here and uh so V-1904, I ended up finding these on Rock Auto. They had no pictures whatsoever. You can't get them anywhere. They're about impossible to find. And it's just, it's just been a nightmare, really. So, all right. So here we are. We'll look at the box. This box right here went to these two valves, okay? The box was to these. This box went to these and then this one had just a cardboard box that went to this one it wasn't an actual original sealed power box so we'll start with this one this one is if you look at it it's very hard to see but sealed power would mark the tip of the valves a lot of companies do this but anyway but if we flip it over this one we actually got to turn it over like this in order to read it so i will read it and if we look at it, it's very faint, but it is there. And it says capital S, capital P, capital E, 1904. Or she can't see nothing. And then if we look on the bottom, it says Brazil. And then it's got capital R dash A. But it is indeed a 1904. And this one actually will work. And it's got the little dimple on it. Okay, the little dimple. It's the correct length, correct stem diameter, 11 30 seconds, everything. But this one has Brazil on it. Okay. Now, this is the same part number. We look, made in Mexico. Okay. V-1904. Okay, this is actually supposed to be a NOS. Both of these, both of these boxes here are supposed to be a NOS boxes. Well, they're not that old, I don't think. So, because that's got a barcode on it, I'd say that's within a few years. So that's definitely not that old. So, these are the next one, and these right here, I will go ahead and tell you, these are our winner right here, and these I was dead on about it, and if we flip them over, small dimple, both of them, small dimple. That's about as close as I could possibly get to being original. The originals were completely flat, no dimple whatsoever. That's as close as I can get. But they both have small dimples. Like, again, same thing. 4.9280 in length from the bottom here to the top of the stem. 11.30 seconds. You know, all these valves are 11.30 seconds. All of them are 4.9280 in length. So all that's the same. They are all 1.5 valves an inch and a half valves exhaust valves so everything's the same but these right here say made in mexico okay so let's come on down to here so same thing v-1904 let me notice the sticker is turned this way and if we look on a little flap see this is the one v-1904 quantity two two okay so that's right because i've got one box that only says a quantity two so many marked it out and must have took a valve out so i just it's been a nightmare but if we look at this one you know we'll turn our box 
let's see. Yeah, this is. I got it. Okay, so let me open the wrong end. I'll open this end. If we look at this one. Okay, same thing. Orient that same way. See, it's got federal thing on the bottom right here. It's got one at the bottom here. So it's the same thing. The box is in the same orientation and everything. This bottom's just open. But these flaps are the same. We look at them B-1904. Quantity 2, quantity 2. Slightly different, you know. Not that big deal. Next to me just stuck a sticker on top of it. That's what it looks like. Yep, they sure did. It looks like it. Like somebody peeled it off. Hard to see, but it looks like it had a sticker on there. Somebody peeled it off and put that one on. So it looks like on that box. All right, so Mexico. We look right here. I mean, this is Mexico right here. There are winter exhaust valves, and if we look, these say made in. I don't know. I can't read that. I can't pronounce that. But this is made in a different place. All right, so. What are you thinking here? Dish. Dish. But if we look, the crazy part is I want to make sure that these valves were in the correct box and some, you know, somebody didn't just randomly stick valves in here and call it good. But these are indeed, if we look and we flip these upside down here, these are indeed... It's hard to read. I'll read it to you. It's capital S, capital P, capital E, 1904. And then at the bottom, it looks like it says, I can't quite make it out, but it looks maybe LK1. I can't quite make it out. But these are 1904 valves. We have one more. 1904. And you flip it up, down. That's right. Throw it on the ground. That's all right. It's not going to matter anyway because we're not using it. But... They are 1904s, 1904s. So they are correct for this box. And this box is obviously a little newer than this one because look at the shelfware compared to this one. Compared to this one, this is a fresher box, you can just tell. So this one's definitely a little older. That's probably maybe 10 to 15 year old box. Maybe this one's probably a few five years maybe it's got a i'm thinking this is a date it's got a zero three zero one six right here so maybe that means march first 2016 or maybe it means march of 2016 i don't know and maybe this one means you know i don't know one w zero two zero seven nine that's the number i was reading right here but they are indeed the same number right here i've even looked at that Seven two four nine five six six five two nine six dash nine, and it's the same number. Seven two four nine five six six five two nine six nine. So all that's the same. V nineteen to four. Everything's the exact same. So just this is just driving me crazy. So at some point in time, you know, I bought these off the internet and thinking I was like, okay, well these will be right. These are nineteen to fours. And apparently, you know, they are not. So at some point in time, they went, they changed it. So they must have went from this dimple here to this dish. That's what's done happened. So at some point in time, they changed that. They're both the exact same part number. Exact same part number now. And at some point, they changed from this dimple. The dimple was first. And then they went to the dish, so it would have been like this. So, this is our predecessor here, and this is our successor. So they changed it. Everything's the same. Everything's the same except for this dish. And I'm not running these with the dish because that's unacceptable. You know, I just, just that's the whole point of doing this is taking it to the next level. And I know, you know, it sounds crazy here, but, you know, that's misadvertisement, basically. Because when they took pictures of it, I got burned. They took pictures like this. And that was it. And I assumed, okay, well, it's a 1904. And they took one of the box there. And they took a picture, you know, the valve there. I said, well, okay, you know, it's got to be right. It's a 1904. I've already confirmed it with these. These are correct. And lo and behold, I got burned once again. Off old Evil Bay. 
So, I mean, it's just been a nightmare. It's been a really nightmare. And see, this one's got the dimple. But look how the dimple looks like it's a little offset to one side. It's not in the center. But if we look. But if we look at the other one. They look like they're two different materials. Look like that one's hardened and this one's not. This is our Brazil one on the right. And this is our Mexico one on the left. But they look like two different materials too. So I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's just been a nightmare. It's really been a nightmare with this. And I think I found a website that finally makes them. And I'm hoping it's not this one here. Because this one just looks like it's a little, I don't know, a little off there. But I mean, notice they are machined slightly different too, you know. Compared, if you look right in here on these, these are the same, these two. But if you look from here to this one, look how much thicker this is. It's just, you know, this one's made in Brazil, so that's probably why that explains that one. It's a different material, and it's machined slightly a little different, but it's a 19, 1904. But these are, you know, machined very close to this. Everything's the same from here down. It's just the face. So, you know, I'll save these for another project. It's not a big deal. But the problem is, is I might not be able to use them like an older small block Chevy because I can't find no information on the standard size link for a 66 283 or a 67 327 or a 70s model 350. You can't find no information. So at some point in another, I'm guessing Chevrolet, you know, maybe it must have been an 86 or 87. They must have changed when they went to the roller cam. I'm guessing they went to a, a longer intake and exhaust valve that's why that's the only thing i'm guessing and that would make sense to me because when you're buying a valve some of them specify 150 thousandths longer so that's the only thing i can figure i mean it's just been it's been a fucking nightmare it really has i mean it's just just getting ridiculous and you just you just cannot find nothing but that's, that's why I don't like buying stuff, certain things like that. Because, you know, I'm not trying to talk bad about nobody. But nobody knows how to take pictures anymore. I got burned once again. Because they took pictures like that. I assumed, okay, 19, 1904. That's got to be our winner. You know, that's what I'm going to get. And I was trying to piece them together to get a set of eight. Because I unfortunately can't buy these in a set of eight. You got to buy them all individually, and it's just a nightmare. So I figured, you know, 1904, that'll be it. You know, we already had these. It's been confirmed. I met, checked them with the caliper and everything. Everything's the exact same. And, uh, you know, looked at these, and I was so pissed when I got them in the mail when I seen that dish like that. It's just, you know, you know, I want this stuff to be right, you know. And it's all about, you know, it's not me being picky about it. It's just... It boils down to, you know, that's the whole thing about taking things to the next level, you know. I mean, if this was a customer's set of heads and they seen that, you know, technically, technically speaking, that's going to make the compression all uneven. You know, I want these valves, I want the exact same little details like this. Yeah, and uh, that's something I really look close at now is if you ever see a set of cylinder heads, look at the intake and the exhaust valves and if they're mismatched and just say you had one exhaust valve here like this and then you had another one like this hey, as a matter of fact let's just go do that let me show you okay so i've actually seen this before where people were selling heads and uh let me get these out of the way here throw this one in here okay now, if they'll take a picture and try and advertise a set of small block Chevrolet heads, and this is something I never really thought about. I've noticed it before when I was younger and everything, but I never really caught my and I really caught my eye like it did, but I never really thought about it. And now I feel stupid about it because now, you know, it's obvious. So I've seen cylinder heads like this, and I did this one on purpose. But uh, if we look, look at this. We got a dished exhaust valve here. And then we got another dished intake valve. But look, it's mismatched intakes, mismatched exhaust valve. This is the original factory valve. Let's see how it's flat. Then we got a dish one here. And then we got one up here that's got a dimple on it. And then we got another flat one. Now, I've actually seen this. Literally, I've seen this where 
you know, folks are selling cylinder heads and they're mismatched valves. And it's just, you know, that's going to make it, you know, when it's this mismatched like that, that's going to make it have, you know, different compression, uneven compression and everything else. I mean, technically it's not that much, but, you know, it's just, that's not going to make it run, you know, completely true, in my opinion. So, hey, you know, that's why I want to take this thing to the next level and do this right. And that's why I'm not running these dish valves like that. And that's why I want it to be, you know, right. It's about taking things to the next level. And, you know, making it right. That's why I'm not just slapping valves in it and calling it good. Because I want it to be right. It's a Vortec. And, you know, I mean, it's not this almighty motor and everything. And, uh... You know, it's nothing really that special. But, it, you know, it's, the point is, is taking your time on stuff like this and making sure it's right. And, uh, yes, I know they're still mismatched. I'm not worried about that right now. You know, I got them in the box out there. But I'm trying to build, I got to basically build a set of eight exhaust valves to make these cylinder hits work. And this is holding me up because I can't put this Vortec together in my truck so I can move on to our four speed right there. And that, you know... It's just been a nightmare. It's been a real nightmare trying to find these exhaust valves. Now, I've did a lot of this. I, you know, if I would have took my time and not filed them like I did and not let them get in the weather and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, that would have avoided a lot of this. And I don't, you know, I would have just used the original exhaust valves and caught good. But, you know, the whole point is, is some of them I kind of filed and I don't want to be dropping a valve, you know. Because some of them I filed, and I did check it. I took the keepers and the retainer and put on it, and it had, you know, a lot of slop in it. Because I just filed the hell out of them, didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, you know, hard lesson learned. Don't do that. But, you know, the guides are fine. I mean, they got a little slop, but, you know, it's nothing, you know, that bad. But this just sucks because this is holding me up because, you know, I can't put these heads together the rest of the way and finish porting and polishing them out. I mean, this is not nothing professional, but, you know, I want to get these things wrapped up so I can get my truck back on the road. And, uh, you know, we're going to run this for a little while so until I get my 454. And I went to get my 454. That is completely paid off now, thank God. But now it's the issue of getting it home. And nobody wants to help. And it's just, it's just been a nightmare. It's just, that's why it's nice to be self-sufficient. <laughs> I can bleed brakes now by myself when we're not using bottles or that stupid vacuum pump or that junk. We're just taking in, uh, we take the brake pedal, I'm pumping it like as if somebody was, you know, underneath the car bleeding them and opening and closing the bleeder. And I just pump them and I take something and shove it between the seat and the brake pedal as long as it holds it down and the pedal does not come up and it doesn't suck air in. You can do it like that. You go open the bleeder valve up. And then walk around, leave the bleeder valve open, and push the pedal the rest of the way down. And then make sure that pedal does not come up whatsoever, not even a little bit. Make sure it's something between the seat and that pedal after you push it the rest of the way down to push all the air out. Make damn sure it doesn't come back up. And uh, then go around, shut the valve, pump them again. And then when you pump them again, open the bleeder up again. And then come back around, we'll get in the car, push the pedal the rest of the way down, push the rest of the air out. And then again, shove something between the seat and the pedal. And, uh, you know, go close the walk, get out, walk around, close the valve, and then come up and pump again. They just keep doing it over and over and over again. You know, it's about being self sufficient. That's the best way to do it. But uh, it's just, you know, it gets a little frustrating, but. I gotta figure out a way to get that 454, and I can't get that until this is done, you know, because I don't have a way to pick it up. So <laughs> it's just a nightmare, all because of these exhaust valves. And I'm not putting the originals back in because I did check some of them. And when I put the keepers and the retainers on them, I mean, I had too much slop, and I just don't want to drop a valve, you know. I'm putting all this effort into this, and, and it's just like the distributor gear, it's been a nightmare with that thing. And I'm going to have a video coming up on uh, distributors here soon. And uh, I talked to a good buddy of mine about that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do a video about that. 
and uh, I'm gonna try to show that in really good detail getting good daylight here and not be you know have crappy camera work but uh, I know my videos ain't the greatest but we're gonna have a video about that because all this boils down to you know I'm determined now I'm determined and I will see this through and you know we're gonna take and we're gonna find out you know because a lot of folks do this the complete opposite of what I'm doing they take you know like a they'll have like a 60s 70s model short block and they put vortex heads on it to up the compression and all that which is good you know you know I like that but I'm doing the complete reverse of that and so basically I'm keeping the top end from a 60s 70 kind of era you know small block but just swapping out the short block so i'm doing the exact same thing i'm just swapping out the short block instead of using vortex cylinder heads on an older block i'm just taking keep my older top in but swapping out just the short block and that's you know you can't find no information on it you can't and i will see this through i will so uh you know this is where we're at and uh Hopefully, I still got a few more valves coming. I've got about three more coming. And uh, if they're correct, I'll order the rest of them that I need. Of course, it's a 50 50 shot, you know, of somebody taking and putting the wrong valve in the wrong box and just, you know. But I don't want to order, you know, however many I need to finish it off because I don't want to take a chance and blow my money and get burned again. So it's just, you know, I'll just buy two of them at a time like that. And if they're a winner, like these two were, and I'll get two more, but these were NOS ones. And it's just been a nightmare. This is our Brazil one. And you can tell that it's been, look at the difference between here to here. If you look up here, it's like different material. It definitely looks different. And they're a little dirty because they got like oil on them and everything. They'll clean up. But uh, it's just been a nightmare. So we're going to have more videos about that and about the distributor gear. I got a Vortec distributor on the way. And uh, it is a Vortec. And we're going to pull the gear off of it. And I'm going to mess with the distributor shaft on a Vortec distributor. And we're going to see if it's the same. Because the way I look at it is I don't want to run a bronze distributor gear because they're soft. And I don't want to take a chance of shavings and everything else getting in my oil pan. And I want to do this the right way. I want to take this to the next level. And it seems like, you know, nowadays you got to use original GM factory parts. I don't like using, you know, I mean, I know steel power, you know, but they make good stuff, though. But, you know, I'm trying to use stuff that's, you know, higher quality because the quality today is just not there. It's not. <laughs> it seems like it's like gasket kits. I think I mentioned that before. Is you can buy a gasket kit and, you know, you do everything perfect and everything. And you only get five years out of it, and that's it. And then you got to pull the intake gaskets off, and they start leaking. And just, I cannot get five years out of intake gasket kits. And that's been on different engines and different, you know, between the Ford and Chevrolet and everything else. It's just the quality is it's just not there anymore. But I wanted to make this video because this has been very frustrating about taking, you know, and putting an old style top in. On a Vortex, short block. Like putting double humps on a Vortex. And the whole point of doing that is to hide the fact that you got a roller cam but still keep the period correct look. And that's the whole point of doing all this. It's just been a nightmare. It really has. But uh, I will see it through. And I will see it through. I will. But they do make a melanized distributor gear, and that's going to be, once I get this exhaust valve situation taken care of, I'm going to move on to that. And I got the Vortec distributor on the way, and it's a lot of misinformation about that. And I'm going to look into that and figure out what's going on with that. Because apparently the distributor shaft, so far from what I've found, is a smaller distributor shaft. It's like 427 thousandths, and my HEI distributor is 491 thousandths. And, you know, my original intent was to take a Vortec distributor gear off and just throw it on the HEI and call it good because it's original GM distributor gear. It was made and designed with this roller cam. And, you know, it shouldn't be an issue. It lasted for almost 200,000 miles. So, you know, I'm going to run that rather than spend a bunch of money on all these other companies out there and just run the original GM factory distributor gear. Then there's no more worries. 
I mean, I, do, I just don't want to run a bronze distributor gear because they're soft, and I don't want shavings getting in the oil pan and just, you know, I'm opening a can of worms, basically. But, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out, and if it is, that still might not matter because I'm going to see if I can't take the distributor shaft out of the uh, Vortec distributor and, uh, maybe modify it somehow to go in the hei and uh we're going we're going to look into this i'm gonna put some serious thought in this because i'm gonna figure out what i gotta do if i gotta go to the machine shop and just maybe swap out the shiver shafts or either take a sleeve and press a sleeve on my hei shiver shaft to make that gear work but uh I'm, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna put some serious thought into that because I want to use the original GM distributor gear. That way, it's no worries whatsoever. I mean, if it lasted 200,000 miles, then you know it's fine. Rather than spend the money, it's not really the money on buying like a bronze distributor gear or a melanized gear. It's just you know, why not go with the original GM gear? It's been in there before. But uh, I'm gonna see because if it's the same, it'd be nice. If it's the same. Uh, distributor gear size, you know, a 491 or even a 500, then uh, you know, that'd be nice. I'll buy it. And then that means that you can go to any junkyard and pull a junk Vortec distributor gear out. It doesn't matter if the distributor works or not, just as long as the gear's good and just pull the distributor gear off and throw it on your HI and go on down the road. You don't have to mess with companies or anything. That's my goal with this, and we're going to find out. And uh, yes, I thought about just throwing a distributor gear in here too. I mean, not a distributor gear, a uh, Vortex distributor gear. The problem with that is uh, you won't have no vacuum of ants. You know, an older distributor runs off vacuum of ants. That one runs off a computer, and then which has a crank sensor and all that other stuff down there and that's on the timing cover, and I just don't want to run on that because, you know, I'm trying to clean it up, and it's all about making it period correct. So I'm going to figure out what's what. But more videos to come on this, and it's been a nightmare. Been a nightmare. And, uh... We're going to keep moving forward, and I will see this through. That is a Vortec. This is a 98 Vortec short block, and, you know, I want to put older heads, not technically on this one, but this is going on a 94, which is a uh, 94, a pre-Vortec. It's the same short block as an actual, you know, 96 to 02 short block. It's the exact same thing. Same thing. So... You know, don't be fooled by, oh, it's a Vortec. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same concept. Whether it's a TBI or a Vortex. Same thing. Same thing. So, uh, we're going to, so I will see this through about putting, like, double humps on a Vortex block or a TBI. Same mm. thing. And, uh, you know, that's the whole point. Technically, we're kind of going old because we're putting... 87 heads on a 98 block so it's the yeah, same kind of concept but the whole point of doing that is this has got the crappy dish pistons in it and i thought about this kind of too is if you got a worn out short block a little bit as long as it's not too bad it ain't got you know a little slight ridge but nothing like tremendous this is kind of a little secret too i thought about this if you you know as long as it's not horrible but you could throw 305 heads on it you know if you got a motor that's kind of losing a little low on compression. Throw 305 heads on to bump the compression up a little bit to get a little more life out of it, you know. It's just little secrets like that, I guess you could do to worn out engines like that to, you know, get more life out of it. To keep it on the wrong road longer. You know. But. Sound crazy here. But it's just been a nightmare finding these exhaust valves. And I will see this through of putting old style heads like this on a Vortex. We'll see it through.